making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about having people in our lives who understand not only international human rights law, but mainly civil liberties and really, mainly, precisely, the laws of the land in federal law. We have many different industries in our world that are regulated by federal law. Most of them have not really trained their employees in federal law. Many of them may have policies for people who are in struggle, but it's hard to tell because when you ask an employee a question that is more of a professional nature, many of the our employees don't know the answers to those questions because they're not common to their job. In my situation, I've recently purchased much gas, literally across multiple states in the Midwest. And what I have found is that many of these employees not only may, may be taking some money at the pump by changing the prices on the pump once you arrive to get a few nickels additional off the dollar, but they might actually be transferring some of that gas to another person in what I call the gas king. Now, literally, I don't quite understand this whole process technologically, but my impression when I look at how this system works of delivering gas to a particular pump is that the person in control of the gas is literally sending a signal across some sort of technology provided by an international company or a national company or even a local company to the individual's uh, station where the person who is purchasing the gas with cash or credit card is literally sitting with their vehicle. From that moment of time, whether it's a prepaid sale or whether it's a postpay sort of sale, the individual is literally receiving gas from that main hub station. They're being allowed to pump because they've put in their credit card information or they paid with cash and they're actually able to get a receipt of the deliverable source of resource, if you will, that provides our lives transportation. Now in my lifetime, I have learned to pump gas from the days of old. I personally don't like it when someone else comes out at a station and tries to pump my gas. I don't want another person manhandling the gasoline than which I'm paying for anymore. And we sort of outgrown that beautiful old service of the old time ways where we could sit in our car and a tenant would come out and wash our windows and fill up our tires and literally pump our gas to make sure that we didn't get filthy with the gasoline that can leak from the pumps and stations. Now, why am I talking like this? Because I'm a man of an older years and an older generation. But what I've literally observed at the pump is that there are young men, particularly of a particular demographic, white and black, particular age demographic, for sure, and some women in that similar age demographic that literally will come and sit with their vehicles at the station. They will block station pumps. They will literally sit there for a long time. And then when someone comes in to purchase gas, they literally jump from their vehicle start to look like and pretend like is what it seems like to me by sight and glance that they're pumping gas too. While a friend or colleague or strategic alliance, if you will, in the main hub might be transferring half the gas possibly, or a good percentage of the gas possibly from the main hub to their car while someone else is using their hard earned dollars to pay for it. Now, does this sound like a plausible technological option is the only question I'm raising. The other types I've seen actually multiple times by ro rotating back around to a gas station where I'll literally drive into a gas station in the middle of the night and then in comes another vehicle and they might be only taking a gallon at a time. You don't know, but you literally pay the bill at your pump and they take some gas and you take some gas and then you go on your merry way, but you decide something feels funny. So you circle back around literally and you sit at the pump or you sit outside the gas station and you watch the same car play the same, what looks like socialite game all evening or all day. This has happened to me on my journey many times. Someone I know has monkeyed with the gauge on my car. My vehicle is a Nissan Murano 2007. It was purchased used from a couple of brothers in Northern Indiana that thought that they were selling me, in theory, a well cared for vehicle, according to the reports they provided me, the car facts and everything else. 
Yet, strangely enough, my vehicle started to have problems. I did an awful lot of driving for sure. I probably didn't keep it exactly perfect maintenance-wise. But then it started to fall apart, literally. So what happened was, when it finally fell apart completely, because for some reason I had something really strange, according to the mechanic who evaluated it, going on with my engine and things like that, then in reality the whole car had to be overhauled. Now, in his review of the vehicle, he told me a, a variety of things that need to be repaired, and his estimate was slightly lower than what the dealership offered to do this for me. The dealership told me that my car was a total loss, that it would be $8,000 to $11,000 to repair it. I had literally just spent $7,000 just to purchase the car virtually outright with the help of a bank. So what that literally meant is that possibly those brothers in northern Indiana sold me a lemon. It could have also possibly been that the enforcement folks who've been sort of monitoring and mobbing my life might have damaged my vehicle along my way because I would have to get out of the car sometimes to try to do some work practically, to go to the lavatory sometimes, and literally to have a life go on when I lost my home through a lot of cyber hacking. Now, yesterday, I tried to check something with a book I'm trying to sell. I have pers purposely kept my personal banking information not connected to that online bank. Yet I found that after I started selling my book online with a few people, and I only sold it a couple times, that someone literally connected my personal bank account with a particular branch of a national company to that online bank account. I never did this. I've been trying to call that banking online company, and every time I go through connecting the contact button to try to find the phone number, which I've called once or twice before, it's virtually not there. They want me to fill out a form to tell them what's going on. How can I possibly alert them to a security risk if I can't pick up the phone and talk to a live human being? And then how do I prove it's me other than the history of my account, which someone clearly monkeyed with because a lot of my old clients' email information is no longer in that system. Matter of fact, almost all my clients' information, except one leady lawyer who I didn't really like her service, and she never really provided me anything other than her free consult about my life and how I needed to do something in my life. And I think that my family interacted with her Ill illegally and illicitly and possibly immorally, and that's my birth family, I should say. Now, I'm sitting in a gas station lot this morning, which is why I'm making this audio cast, and I just purchased through trade of something because I was out of cash and my credit card seems to not even be able to run a dollar or less purchase, which seems really odd to me at that bank I was talking about where it looks like somebody's been making a secondary card of mine and pretending that they're me and making prices and uh, shopping like me. So it looks like I'm using more money than I am. And that's something that thieves have sort of mastered today is how to look at all of your financial information illegally getting into your mail boxes or unlawfully opening mail that's already open and left on your table and getting in through a locked door and literally discovering how you make purchases. And then from there, they produce another card. And I sort of recognize that my card didn't seem right for after a while. And literally now, for some reason, when I should have just a few dollars in that account, I'm not really finding that to be true. Now, what am I talking about, people? I'm talking about the violations of rights. And openly, when a man like me, who's had an educational background, goes into a gas station and says, I just bought a gallon of gas to move me down the road a little bit further, it should get me at least now 10 miles to the gallon, because that's what I've been measuring regularly with my car situation, where someone literally stole the muffler I just put on this vehicle and spent five grand to overhaul completely to like new and it's supposed to be functioning completely and yet now I have a rusted old muffler that's virtually touching the ground as if someone decided that they would just in the middle of the night take my muffler off that was perfectly aligned with my car and put their old muffler on. Now how am I to know? I was asleep. Anybody could walk in with a jack in the middle of the night while nobody's paying attention and lift up the car, pretend they're working on my car for a reason and move that off. I don't know how hard it is to take that crap off. And frankly, I shouldn't have to know if I trust the mechanics in my life. The problem isn't really today that I don't know what's going on in my vehicle. 
a lot of people want to tell me what's going on with my car, and I sort of find that offensive. Are they planning to get out of their vehicle and loan me money to get a new muffler? Are they planning to help me figure out why, when my car was supposedly going to be like new, my wheels look like they're about ready to fall off my car, and yet every single police officer thinks that he's going to pull me over for some ridiculous idea of the fact that I might have crossed a line or I needed I was on the side of the road or I was going too slow, like they told me up in Zionsville? I'm sorry, there are elderly people who drive too lawfully, and they don't drive that fast. I wasn't driving that fast because I was looking for an address. I was also realizing I need to have some breakfast, so I pulled over to pull out a can opener. Yet there's a police report apparently allegedly now made on my name because some police officer was lying in wait for me personally. It happens regularly. Now, the other day, one IPD person helped me without pissing on me as far as I could tell. I was told in McCordiasville or wherever, McCordsville a few years ago by a female police officer that lawfully police officers cannot run my plate unless there's a reason. What I know from the male police officers that I've dealt with in the last little while is that they regularly run our plates, the men do. Apparently they miss that part of training. They automatically ask for my license and registration, sometimes license mainly, to figure out who I am. A Zionsville man said, well, I don't know who you are. And I turned to him and I literally said, I'm sure there's a lot of people in this community that you don't know who they are. Why is it that you're bothering me now when I'm at the side of the road, not doing anything other than shifting my gear? You see, we have this situation where people are policing other people. Now, let me get back to the beginning of my story because my purpose in doing these audio casts is not to do the typical journalism triangle of information where we start with the most pertinent information and we widen it out to the base of the triangle with the details. I went to journalism school. I know what the goal is. My purpose is to get people to listen to what I'm talking about. That when a group of people decide to destroy a life of someone without a thought to that person's individual life, they literally can do it. Why? Because technology is no longer in our full control. Our telephones don't have lines directly to the house. We're all on cyber technology that anyone with a great deal gift of capabilities in security or anything else can manipulate, that companies can be told by law enforcement that this person's doing something unlawful, that families can lie about and say, I'm the family member representing this person. Here's a document that's supposedly legal, and I'm going to do this to this person by monitoring and controlling their calls and removing their phone, their voicemails and other things. Or maybe it's just a technology company lying about their free services and not giving them their phone messages. And in that moment of time, people are taking away the international rights of an individual's human rights. You see, international, under international human rights law, we have first and foremost the freedom of communication. We also have the freedom of religion. We have the freedom of assembly. We have the freedom to decide our own physicians, literally. We have the freedom to prove ourselves in the world with legal documentation. And we have the freedom to not be litigated to death by police of our international country. Something that has happened locally is that local people have not understood what human rights laws are. You see, when we talk about human rights, like people of my family who I won't talk about their names right now, but I have a sister who literally fights for human rights of women and children a world away. But she doesn't fight for the same international human rights of mine here in the States. She literally can't even make the leap in her mind of how the connection is. We as American citizens are participating in, interna in an international world. And when we participate in this international world, we are saying, I agree with the laws that my country and my government and my president has decided to participate literally in. The International Human Rights Declaration, I believe, is a law. I believe it is something that NATO and other types of world order organizations have put in place to protect people's human rights around the world, to make countries a little bit more equal in the caring of their citizenships, literally. And Eleanor Roosevelt did this long ago with her husband, who was president at the time. Most people know who Theodore Roosevelt is or was. And frankly, what I'd like to talk about is that I had a coin collection on my person. That coin collection I put into a bag in my car. It was a gift from my father, literally, long ago in childhood. For some reason, people think they have the right to get into my vehicle regularly, to steal my possessions, to take things out of my car, 
to procure and proclaim that something that I have left in my vehicle, either attended by me or unattended by me if I've fallen asleep because I'm older and tired, or literally when I lock my car and leave it in my car, that they have the right to get in my car and take something. Now, have I been made a target by some organizational group, some black mafia, some Mexican group that wants to stay here unlawfully, or some Arab group that wants to tell me what my medical condition is or isn't in their life? You see, I can label all these types of groups that I've observed around my life regularly. I've never seen so many of these people in my life is pretty true. But I also lived a life in a community where I loved and had a great house and did most of my work from my business office and my private home. And frankly, it's immoral for me to suggest that these people are doing this. But why is it that when I literally get out of my car just to do a little bit of work to try and get online at restaurants and companies and uh, grocery stores and other places where I've literally shopped for most of my adult life, that I'm being beamed with all these questions about whether I'm not whether or not I'm a customer of theirs. You see, when people go through struggle, they have difficulties. They lose jobs. They might lose a business practice. They might decide to close their practice down because their loved ones who are doing it with them are no longer with them. But they're all trying. Every single one of us is trying to make a life worth living and produce enough income in our lifetime in the hourly wages or salaries that we, we, we earn for ourselves to create a retirement worth having. Mega movie stars have it, in theory, easy, but that's not true. They all struggled through low income to get to where they are today. Most of us would love to be a basketball or football player or one of these sportsmen who literally went to millions. But was it really an instant step? For some, it was. For others, it literally wasn't. You see, every single man, woman, and eventually child who grows into adulthood, prayerfully so, has the right to decide what their little job might be just as much as a company has the right to tell them, we'd like to hire you, please. But the problem we seem to be having is a lack of training in customer service. I have literally gone into restaurants in McDonald's and gas stations like Heath, the, the uh, KC, and openly tried to ask questions about something that happened to me in the purchasing process of their sale. Now, I say it like that because I want to remind people that when literally we go in and hand someone money, we are making a purchase from a company that's making a sale. It's not an old man buying something from a teenager representing herself. It is literally a man saying, I'm investing my last dollars, probably, my definitely my hard-earned dollars, into your company for something to eat, something to wear, something to put in my vehicle to allow me to move and have mobility underneath international human rights law and freedom of movement underneath actually our American U.S. constitutional amendments. But openly, it's for me to be able to go on in life and continue my life no matter where it is right now. In my current life, I've had people steal my rights from me. I literally never connected to bank accounts, and yet now they're all miraculously somehow connected. And here's how. I literally used my card that I hadn't used for many months, a really long time, at a gas station and a dollar store. And my guess is that the people monitoring my life and lying to others about their rights to monitor my life with them literally went in and demanded that bank card information. And that employee was so badly trained by their company in the law of privacy of financial information that that employee foolishly provided it to that officer or that person who literally said, I'm this. Maybe they pretended to be something. Maybe they pretended to be a law enforcement person. We have a lot of people who can go and buy those uniforms online. We have a lot of people who can flip a badge. We have a lot of people who, like the guy over in Zionsville, who when I asked for a business card, he mocked me and gave me the business card of an administrative assistant in his local office. You see, it's not about whether or not I remember his name or not. It's literally about the legal responsibility he has for the work that he's doing and providing for underneath the employment and salary in which he's gaining lawfully from an organization. And whether or not he's telling me the truth or not isn't really a matter to him, but it's a total matter to me as a consumer of that opportunity. Now, the way that I talk about this, does this make sense to people? That literally when I'm talking about my rights to purchase 
one gallon of gas to get a little bit further down the road in my homelessness should entitle me to not only dignified service, but a privacy of my transactional value. Now, am I making more sense to you people? I literally bought a gallon of gas, which in a car like mine should actually get me about 20 miles, maybe more in the local area. I got three miles. I woke up this morning because I literally fell asleep from a tone these people play. And I know that lawfully sounds funny. It does to me too, but I've almost got it down to a numeric, a numeric science. That openly, when people play others like this, they literally get into our cars at night and they siphon gas or they ruin our vehicle if it's already falling apart. You see, there's people like that. There are people in the law world that just violate our laws. And then there are those people who allow those violations to happen because they want to control a person's outcome. Literally try to control where I'm going in life or you're going in life. And that's really what I'm telling the story about. That when we're making these audio files and when I'm trying to promote myself to get a marketing job and say, look, these are the ills that we're facing. People want to make fun of me. They want to look at my website, which is pretty good looking for a guy who's homeless and whose technology money is running out. That literally they want to say, I'm not homeless. I must be lying. Or they want to provide something private, literally about my body. That it was none of their business in the first place to know. So that they can see how people will treat me. The problem with that is, did they lawfully have the right to take that information anywhere in the world at all? Did they lawfully have the right to even know that information? And more importantly, what is it that they're saying that is causing these people to be unwilling to serve me at the counter on behalf of their national, local, or international companies? You see, people are not paying attention to their roles. And that's something that in foreign lands like Japan, we talk about regularly. You see, in a foreign land like Japan, where I lived for about five years, and I'm not going to say exactly how long, because it's none of your business. The first thing that we say when we introduce ourselves in Japanese is the name of our company, because that reminds us as an employee that we are literally being paid by that firm. The second thing we position, we position ourselves with is our department. The third thing we position ourselves with is our personal title of level of responsibility. And the last thing we position ourselves with is our family name. Now, I want to say the last thing because in Japanese culture, we introduce ourselves with our last name first. The final thing that we provide them is literally our first name, which is the personal aspect of our life. In Japanese culture, we don't call people by the personal name unless we're in their family. You see, there are many countries, nationalities that have many type of cultural etiquette things that we don't all know. But only the Holy Spirit and Lord God in heaven probably knows them all. And why is that? Because he made the Tower of Babel. Lord God also said, I made every human being that exists today. Yet we have a religious right that doesn't believe so. We have a moralistic society of blacks, whites, Arabs, Asians, Chinese, Latinos, Mexicans that feel that God didn't make it all. What is God's highest rule? His highest rule is that Lord God rules them all. People are abhorred by what recently happened in the news, which I've only heard minuscule details of because I'm not online. My television is hopefully still in storage, not being stolen from me through a locked key on my storage unit. And practically, I'm not really talking to birth family because they keep crapping all over my mental health. Is it stressfully homeless? Actually, no, not for me. The most stressful thing is how people treat me when I am homeless. If I literally go into a place and say, honestly, I'm a homeless person. I'm looking for a job. They say, get online and get an application. I try and get online at their company and I'm never able to get online until the middle hours of the morning when I literally am falling asleep. My brain is not functioning as well. As a homeless person, I'm looking for food to purchase with the money that I am selling and earning. I've had a few pastors who've helped me. I've had a lot, particularly in a particular community, that have refused. And I want you to really think about this no solicitation and no loitering thing. Where are people to go if they can't sit down in a place and talk to people about the jobs that they literally need? Where is someone to go when the gas that they purchased lawfully, however they purchased it, whether it's through 
money, cash, uh, credit card, bank card, or literally a trade with an employee who said, I'd be happy to buy that from you so you can literally buy some gas and get on your way. It's not about the loitering policy. It's that they understand the pain of being in a difficult situation. Now, when I talk like this and I talk lengthy, do I sound mentally unwell or do I sound reasonable enough to you that if you lost your job, if you were literally locked out of your telephone, locked out of your computer capabilities, told by employees you couldn't use their internet because you were not a customer today, but you've been a customer most of your life, would that not make it difficult for you to find a job today? Would that not make it easy for people who know technology from other worlds because they train their children in this much faster than we do to take advantage of a person's life? Now, I'm sort of done telling my story. I have made it a little bit about me because it is my life. It is my money. It is my resource of time that I'm sharing. It is literally a way to weave in a web in a very different way in journalistic reporting capabilities of what's going on for me. But at the same time, is to literally shout at you and say, if this can be done to me, it can totally be done to you. So while you might be tall, you might be handsome, you might be beautiful, you might be sexy, you might be all sorts of things physically in this world, that if someone takes a hold of your technology, your rights, and decides to take them from you, they can totally destroy your life in a matter of weeks, months, and possibly a few years. And when it's family, birth family that does it to you, it's a painful process. And we say, no, I'm not interested in participating with you. If it's some other authority figure who thinks they have the lawful right to do it, we have to look to the laws and say, what lawfully gave you the right to have this information in the first place? What lawfully gave you the right to deny me my national t telecommunications rights? You see, local people forget that we are in an international world and that human rights is the most fundamental aspect of our life. So I'm literally writing a law. It's called Mark's Law. And Mark's law is really quite simple. It's that I, as a citizen of a world country, have the, the lawful right to decide who I'm going to allow into my life in every aspect of my life, from not only my personhood in terms of how I physically care for my body, where I live, what I do for a living, but also in terms of my paperwork, in terms of my finances, in terms of my banking, in terms of my medical records, in terms of any little lawful document I need to be a citizen of my world, and finally, of my property, that every single thing, including my vehicle and my home that I may buying, be, be buying or renting, is lawfully mine to control. So Mark's Law comes from three places. Mark's Law literally comes from the name in the Bible of St. Mark, because I am a faith-based person. Mark's law comes from an honor of my brother who died at age 12 and left a mark on my family of positivity and love and peacemaking, according to the stories my siblings tell about him, my older siblings. I was a baby on his lap, so I didn't know him well. And Mark's law, thirdly, comes from the concept of the meaning of the word mark, to mark oneself a citizen of the world, to mark oneself professionally in a way that makes sense to my soul, not yours. So when I talk to people like this, I'm asking, do you not literally simply have the same mark of life on you? That you have the right to do things without somebody you don't know or know monkeying around in your business, your car, your life, your home, your property, your relationships, your spirituality, your faith, your whatever the hell it is that you choose to do for your life. You see, international human rights law is totally about that. Now, I'm talking a little long today with the help of a tool I know how to utilize, which literally has given me such a magical journey in life. I can't thank the woman that I love with all my soul enough for teaching it to me because her gift to me that day literally has saved my life hundreds of times. And I just want to tell her, I love you and I miss you in my life. Now, is that too emotional for you people? Is it wrong for me to publicly say to someone, I love you? Is it wrong for me to leave my life insurance policy only to her? Because she allowed me the dignity to love the Lord first, to love her second, and to provide my life the dignity of my profession. 
and the dignity of my friendship. The responsibility to love her always, no matter what, come what may. My love is the least I could say about her. Regardless of what the relationship level of intimacy came to. And no one has the lawful right to take that love out of my soul for any human being that I choose to care for or any living creature that the Lord puts in my life. You see, the people of the Lord know who the Lord is, but many of them forget the rights we have as humans, not only under Lord God's law in heaven, which we call the house of the Lord in my fair area of faith, but literally underneath the international marketplace in which we reside. This has been Blake Ensign talking about real life, real things, real issues, real concerns, real worries, real cons actual activities that I'm engaged in right now in the most humblest of circumstances. And I wish you all the greatest life you could possibly create for yourself through the relationships you choose to form, through the employment you choose to have, to the businesses you choose to build and the people you choose to serve in this world, in God's name. May Americans light of the world shine upon the earth in a way that people get so that we become beacons of light, love, peace, honor, dignity, and more for the rest of the world. And may our military know who is lawfully right and who is illegally wrong in this land to protect our borders from harm, shame, and disregard from the foreign infidels that want to destroy the beauty of the world in which we created here in our country. I profess the name of the Lord Most High in everything I do, so you'll just have to get over it if you don't like it. But I can show you the magic of the Lord, but you have to have enough faith to believe it's true. Again, this is Blake Ensign from Blaze Communications LLC saying, make it a life worth living and a retirement worth having today. Serve others above yourself.